Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. want the ultimate you gotta be willing to pay the ultimate price summer of swayze's here james thank god look at this thank god look at this main i know if you have not subscribed yet to the video show on youtube please do so all right now so you can see this glorious mop i did it yeah how do you feel about it james i have to say i feel okay but I have to say, it looks exactly. If you guys look at the picture <laughs> right now on your phone of Point Break Swayze. Point Break Swayze. It really is. I mean, the waves are the same. Yeah. The color, it really we is. We did it. Yeah. We did it. Shout out to Margie. Margie at Parlor 7. Yeah. I mean, really did it. Here in Wilmington, really North Carolina. Did it. You're yeah. looking to get a Swayze. She's the best in the biz. She's the best in the biz. You show Look her a pick. You show her this. a pick. Man. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. And if you hey, look, if you can't watch the video, you can just you can go on to at ST James, ST James on Instagram and peep her. You can peep peep it on out. Um, I have a I have a, a, a strong, sneaky suspicion that we're going to be hearing a lot of Swayze quotes today, James. Yeah. This is my best life. This is it right here. Look at this. That's so great. Oh, it's basic dog psychology. If you scare them and get them peeing down their leg, they submit, James. Okay. So yeah. These are, these are point break quotes. From Bodie. Okay. We, we know his, his name. Obviously, this is this is Bodie's this is Bodie's time. Gosh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun one for you <laughs> all summer long. Is it is it is it wrong of me to uh, be amped that I have a no fuss haircut now? No, I woke up no, this morning, yeah, and was just like, oh, well, fuck, this is done. Right, I don't have to do shit. I can just roll out. So I had to fucking do an intricate braid and makeup and talk about the opposite <laughs> of no fucks is me. This is the booty lifestyle now, brother. This is what, this is what we're living. That, this is showbiz, baby. So great. Isn't it? Yeah. Man, this is, I, I feel free. I'm so happy. For I feel you. like I could pull on a Ronald Reagan mask and go rob a fucking bank today. That, that's how free I feel. I'm so happy. Really for feel you. great about this. Yeah. Again, waking up, because I got this yesterday. Mm-hmm. Waking up to do the show, and it was like, oh, fuck. I can just brush my teeth and I'm good to go. I will be interested to see what people feel about it. You're kidding, right? I'm just interested. This is going to be a grand slam home run right here. Look at this fucking thing. Look, I mean, really look at it from all no, sides and angles. Like, it's it really amazing. is great. I mean, it's, it's like I said, dead on we're gonna have to do <laughs> we're gonna have to do a side by side obviously but wow the weirdest thing is how i'm able to pull all these looks off with ease you know a lot of people try too hard mm-hmm. with me it's just it's easy mm. it's like it's it's a sunday morning with me you know sure try too hard yeah this is i'm just pulling this off with ease if you saw me in the streets right didn't know me came up to me and you were like hey man i need directions down to you know, whatever rub and tug, right? Sure. And I, I had to give a stranger on the streets directions. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't. They wouldn't bat an eyelash. They'd be like, "Oh man, that's just a fucking cool guy." Right. It, just, do they it know? looks yeah. like they just can't. He just walked out of a morning surf. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so much effort was put into that. None. Mm. None. Mm. None at all. No, I mean, no. really it was too out of your head. The hardest thing I'll 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 give the, the audience um my know hows here on this. I, I don't know if that's a that's the correct phrase, but I like it. Carry on. My know hows. Mm-hmm. Here's my know hows on on uh trying to get the onesie twosies of the Swayze. Hardest part of it is the growth. Right. That fucking shit took what five months? Yeah. Oof. 
was not stoked about that Mm -hmm. because you get you get to an awkward stage with it where it's just like hey man it looks like you have a mullet and i was like ah you don't understand i gotta get this body waved out i gotta get this permed out it's not gonna be like that and they were like man what are you just an effortless perm what are you going for here and i was like man you'll understand now i'm amped that it's out in the world and i don't don't have to answer those questions anymore because i was wearing a hat for a while what's the end game lengthwise for you maybe this is my look permanently but you're gonna let it go even longer i don't think longer than this like i think this is this is the exact swayze length so you're gonna get it cut to that probably okay Probably, I'll, you know, I'll keep it up. Mm-hmm. I'll keep up uh, appearances. I'll keep a nice. Uh, I don't know. I think set let of it gardeners go. around I it. I think let it go for the summer. Just all the way. Just like whatever it's gonna do. If you really <laughs> want to be effortless, be effortless. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, all summer, so it's what three months, right? Mm-hmm. Four months is the summer. Shouldn't no, be three months. Man, the seasons. There's four seasons. Yeah, that was three dumb. months and was real dumb. Three so months. That won't be too much growth. No, right? it's not. It's not going to be too much growth because trying to get this to this point was, you know, five, six or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It, was so, it was a bitch. Yeah. Um, but I'm amped that I can just walk around because I travel a lot. I do the, you know, I'm going up to Cleveland this weekend, mm-hmm. uh, doing a show with uh, Danny Horsnop. Yeah. From uh, Asking Alexandria doing a drinking bro show with him and then uh, i'm gonna go up and see some of my beef fries from college uh recently one of them was diagnosed with cancer so we're all getting together and uh having a nice little boys trip um out which would be fun but like i'm looking forward to not wearing hats and like the shower of long hair i get it now like i get what you're you go through Mm -hmm. do you yeah i do actually ow how it's okay. So when you have longish hair, and this isn't look, this is what you, the shoulder length is what you would call this, right? If, yeah. if, right? Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Just getting out of the shower with this much wet hair and trying to blow dry it off because there's look, there's some meetings that I couldn't wear a hat to. There's some events that I couldn't wear, you know, a hat to. Mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, cool. I got to mix. I got to do something with this this goddamn thing. Right. Um, going through that whole process of blow drying it, just blow drying it. At this length, you're like, bro, it's a good 20 just to get it fucking dry. And right. then you're leaving part of the back wet because you're just like, I don't have anybody got time for this shit, right? right? No fuss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now with this, you just, yeah, you take a shower and then you just leave. That's it. Do you put stuff in it? I asked her. I was something? like, hey, what do I do with this? She was like, you know, you can throw a little mousse in it, um, but that's about it. She's like, just to bunch it up. But she was like, that's it. Yeah. And I was like, ah. Oh. Fuck you. Now you're speaking my language. Right. Then I can just let it dry right. throughout the day and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. If I just get up and it looks sweet, whatever, you know? But that's the Bodhi lifestyle that I've chosen. Yeah. And that's me, you yeah. know? That's, yeah. That's who the big guy is. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's Bodhi all summer long. If it, look, this is to the audience at home. I'm going to look directly in the camera and say this. If... If this works all summer and I like it, might be a permanent look. What do you think about that? We'll see. Thoughts go. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Do you care what I think? Yes, I do. Okay. But you said you, you dug it. You were into it. You were like, holy shit, that's dope. No, I'm into it. Okay. I'm into it. You know. But... <laughs> It's not I'm like there was it. a long pause I'm there. I'm into it. Let's see what happens after the summer. Because I do like a, you know, a, a, a shorter cut as well. A clean, on you. a clean cut man, yeah. Yeah, so, but I think for the summer, I think being in the beach, like at the beach, like every day, basically, the pool. Yeah. I think it's the way. Yeah. Um, what about a mustache with this? Look, I'm always Oof. down for the mustache. I think the mustache brings it to a level of like, oh... He's not totally serious. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Where like if you have the big mustache, even with the, the highlights, people are like, oh, OK, there's some kind of joke here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead of like, oh, did he get those highlights on purpose? Like thinking that we oh, don't boy. know. You know what I mean? So I think it ca- brings the irony, which y- I sure, love. Right? A little bit of, a, of ir- ironic look. 
which I think is funny and I like. Well, here's the thing. I, and I like was handlebar with this. I mean, reminiscent. Of I, like, I, I was I was very cognizant yesterday of of people's reactions when I went out. Mm-hmm. And here's what I noticed, because yesterday was the first full day that I had this right where I just walked out in public, did my life. And was curious is, is if people would say anything or kind of like whatever with the mustache. They say stuff. Yes. So uh, 50, maybe 75 percent of people when I go out are just like, yo, dope stash, man, like a wink of like, right. dude, that's hilarious. Whereas this I got nothing yesterday from like they were just like, that's his that's his life. That's just who he is. And I was like, oh, shit. All right. I'm really pulling this off with these. Yeah, and the length that it is now confident. and the way that the hi- highlights are blending, it looks like possibly the sun did it, Yeah, which I like. <laughs> um, I, got no, I mean, no one batted an eyelash yesterday. I was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. I was really surprised by it. I was like, oh, you're not, you're not in on the joke. And there were like, you know, there's a mustache again. A lot of people will be like, hey, you. Mm. that thing's not real huh but with this i got i got none of that yesterday you're very different than like the other dads in the neighborhood let's say <laughs> like they're very much like they'll be like okay bud you know they're very much like they take the clipper mm. you know polo shirt sure 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 hat sure. oakley's you know what i mean yeah don't they don't uh, stray? I don't. I don't from conform their, to society's right. boundaries, J- James. Right. Broken free. Yeah. Broken free from my chains. So. I like it. <laughs> I'm amped about it, though. This is one of the best ideas ever. Mm-hmm. And this all stemmed from the people at home. There was a bet last year with uh, my co-host on Drinking Bros, uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, that. Uh, it was on Oregon University of Oregon that if Oregon didn't cover a spread, I had to dye my hair blonde like Steve Prefontaine and then uh, and grow the black mustache. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which was dyed. And uh, so I did it, obviously. And then after that, I was like, you know what? Fuck him. I'm going to ride this out. Right. What else could I possibly do with this? And then yeah, fuck him. boom, mm-hmm. watched Point Break on TNT one night. And I was like. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. There I am. You Utah, like, get me two. It was like looking in the mirror. Give me mirror. two. Yeah, like it's great. In the mirror. It was great. So I feel pretty stoked about it. Shout out to Margie. Yeah. Uh, that was rad. And then this weekend, this will be the test this weekend. Because I'm going to, like I said, I've got to go to Cleveland. Oh, right. So like, I'll be in places that aren't like beach towns. Right. And then I, you'll also be with your college friends that keep it. Uh, keep it tight, keep it clean. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Keep it cut. <laughs> keep an adult type persona. So that will be interesting as well to see. Well, when you have a real job, you can't really do shit like this. Mm. You know, I know when I say real job, I mean you know a nine to five cubicle yeah, that type of true. shit. Like that's true. That's you got to go to meetings, and everybody's just like, "Hey, bro, you can't do that here." Mm-hmm. So. I, like, I, you know, I get it, but I, I want to see in like, because Cleveland's a perfect test, right? That works in Cleveland and, and nobody says anything. Then it's just like, oh, shit, this is part of my life. Yeah. Because here's still a beach town where a lot of people surf. So yeah, you kind of walk around and you're like, oh, all right. Yeah. You're probably, probably surfing all day. Right. No bigs. Or LA where it's just like, whatever. Like, yeah, people yeah, yeah. don't look at you twice for anything. No, no. So. Cleveland would be a nice little tester where it's just like, all right, cool. I'm just rolling out. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I'm interested to, to hear what your uh, college friends have to say. <laughs> the first night is in Akron. So that's not Cleveland's a little hipper than, than Akron. What do you say? The first night? Yeah. What is the plan? It's Dan- Danny's band is playing. Okay. So I'm interviewing him and then his band is playing afterwards, but it's in Akron. So Akron's about. Who are you going with? 35, yeah. 35 minutes away. Just me. Okay. So it's just me, and then we invited some drinking bros out. So I'm going to interview him. It was one of those things where, uh, you know, obviously a friend of the show, a friend in real life. Um, he's the lead singer of Asking Alexandria, who does the theme song for Drinking Bros. Mm-hmm. We did um, an episode with them last year on tour in Jacksonville mm-hmm. for this huge, like, 
rock fest thing. It was like Foo Fighters, and then we did a, the Ozzy Osbourne and all the, all the shit. It was one of the most funnest interviews I've ever done. He's a cool guy. Gr- great guy. Um, his uh, fiance is military, and uh, both of them just rad people, right? Um, but his bandmates were awesome. And the fun thing about that interview in particular that was different than everyone else's was Danny's the lead singer, and then he's got this band, and the band is incredible, right? Well, you're, you were seeing, you're seeing them now on the verge of this explosion, mm-hmm. and we were on the tour bus, and literally a publicist came on and was just grabbing them, just being like, hey, you got to go do this, you got to go do that, and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, oh, fuck. Um, and so we interviewed the band separately from Danny and then Danny came in and then we did it. It was like a two parter combined into one, but you know, you're there at this festival getting trashed all day, just absolutely trashed. And so, um, they're coming in and like, you can see them throughout the day of like the various stages of like how fucked up they were getting. (laughs) It was just like, Oh, all right. Awesome. And it was just a blast of an interview all the way around because the, the half the band didn't know what the, the other half was saying and things like that. So like we were able to combine it. It's great. Saturdays is just Danny, right? Cause Danny's just like, Hey man, uh, I'm doing it. He's doing a solo record. Mm-hmm. Um, it's acoustic, like dude's crazy, crazy talented. Um, and then he's going to have, I guess like some backup band members for some other shit. Um, so he's like, hey, come on, come on out to the show. It's super intimate. It's rad. And we got invited uh, when he was in North Carolina a couple of weeks ago, but we happened to be in San Antonio. Right. And he goes, where else are you going? And I was like, man, I got to go to Cleveland for this thing. He's like, when? I'm, I'm in Cleveland. Same dates. So we're doing the interview with him. And that'll be fun because it's totally different. Like this is, I, I think it's just set up by him. Right. Like, he's doing a solo record. He's doing these like, I mean, I saw him play in front of 20,000 people in Jacksonville. I think this place is like maybe 300, 400 um, and it's acoustic and it's just him and a guitar and then a, like a light backup band, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll be fun and completely entirely different. Like it's a totally different vibe where you're just like, Oh shit. All right. Rad. Um, Cause one of the questions I asked him when we were doing that last interview was uh, like, who would be your, your dream collab- collaboration? And he was just like, dude, Justin Bieber. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, man, I like to like write acoustic, you know, play acoustic music, um, write it for other people and things like that. And he goes, man, I'd love to write for other people. And I was like, ah, shit. So I'm really interested in seeing this show. Right. Because it'll be totally different than 20,000 people just, uh, 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 you know, like, yeah. uh, in a small club and venue and all that stuff. So uh, I'm excited about it. Um, and, and he had asked, you know, to come out and all that stuff. And I re- recorded some, you actually helped edit that, recorded some uh, vocal inserts for him. Oh, these yeah, musicians yeah, yeah. wear uh, earpieces and then they're cued about which, which the next song is. And he was like, hey, I think it'd be hilarious if I was on tour the whole time you did it as Morgan Freeman. So um, when he's up on stage, he gets to hear that. That cues him into the next song. Yeah. So I'm amped. Sweet. I'm amped about that. Yeah, so it'll be, yeah, just us and then uh, Drinking Bros. Um, Drinking Bros, Ohio. So told everybody to come on out and uh, we'll see. We'll see who shows up. I don't know how big this place is. I've never been there. Right. I'm not a big Akron guy. And a lot of people ask me, hey, man, you went to Ohio State. You must know the entire state that well. I really don't. I've only been to Cleveland a handful of times, uh, Toledo a handful of times. And then, you know, Cincinnati, Yellow Springs once like just not. I'm not the most, you know geographic Ohioan mm-hmm. oh Ohioan uh there is so like I I don't know that area that well uh you don't know this area that well no do you know what I mean so I, and I, and it's weird like I was like that in California and in uh in Georgia too where it was just like yeah yeah the rest of it exists I guess like I mean San Diego I went to a handful of times um probably 10 times something like that right but that was close but like dude I never I Sacramento, I've never been. I never went to the state's capital in California. Yeah, there's no need. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Sacramento. Sacktown. I've only been to, uh, no, I mean, I've never been to even Santa Barbara. And that's not even far from you. You haven't? No, not once. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Yeah. Um, we'll have to go next time. And, and like, look, I was it's like amazing. I was raised in Georgia my entire life. And like, you know, 
outside of where I grew up. And I would say Delonica, I went to a bunch. Um, but my dad, my father lived in Chattanooga, so I would go up north uh, along that, that route. But uh, like the, the, the rest of the state, you know, I've been to Savannah a couple of times, but that's a four and a half hour drive from there. So it was just like, eh. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of relatives that lived there, but. Um, we went to Savannah. We did. But we we did it because we were driving up the coast. Yeah. So, so it was just a stop. Yeah. Stop there for the day or whatever it was. You know, I've been there, like I said, a handful of times, but not much. Um, you know, there's like some Savannah. there's some places where people lift off or, or list off, you know, when, when I'm out of like, oh, man, you're from Georgia. Do you know this? And I'm like, no, man, I don't know where that's at at all. Or people in, like in Ohio have been like, hey, have you been to Steubenville? Yeah. No, no, I haven't. Um, <laughs> Old Steubenville. Yeah. Um, I, well, I'm not one weird. of those people who's just like, hey, I'm going to go check out my surroundings yeah surroundings and state all the way around be like all right cool why you know if i'm going there i'm going there right and that's that's kind of it you what like have you been all the way through Cal- like you're born and raised in california have been you been all up and down all through there the way yeah like what's north of san francisco what's north of san francisco yeah. it would be like i mean i've gone all the way up to oregon right so. so San Francisco. So then you get into Lake Chico, you get into like Redland. Never been there. Yeah. Never. Uh, uh, Big Sur. Yeah. Is it's south of. So San Francisco is like the highest. Okay. Before gotcha. it gets into like kind of Redwoods and like I said, Chico. And then you're pretty much at the border. Gotcha. So before that, uh, Monterey, Carmel. No. no. Never Big been Sur, there. no. Nope. So Big Sur, I've been to. Bakersfield? No. Never been to the Bakersfield? Yeah, no. St. Louis Obispo, never been there. Like You didn't go to Napa? You didn't no, go to. Never been to Napa. Buellton? Nope. Where they shot sideways? No. What a shame. I know. What a shame. Well, it is Na- some well, really Napa, fucking cool shit so, up there. So here's the reason with Napa, right? Like. When you go and we watched that wine country, what, is that what it was called on Netflix? Wine country. That was Napa Napa. But San Luis Obispo and like Buellton yeah. uh, is the little bit lower, more accessible wine country, if you will, where it's like sideways. Okay. You know, the little like bar and sure. the like. Well, either way. So my, my whole thing solving. was I want to do it when I can do it right. Right. Blow it out and really. Like, I don't want to go and be, you know, pinching pennies and all that other shit. A lot of the reason, like, um, in L.A. that I never went anywhere out, you know, too, too far out of L.A. was I was always worried about missing a meeting or not, you know. I felt like I should have been using my time wisely every time. Mm-hmm. So I did. Like, I mean, I fucking wrote relentlessly. And um, I, it was all, I was always shooting something or writing or, or something. So I just looked at it as a distraction or a waste of time. I mean, before we went on vacation, uh, I, like I can't remember vacation, vacation like that fucking ever. Mm. There was some, there's some part of me that felt guilty for not working all the time. So, and, th- and that's probably true to this day still where it's mm-hmm. just like, all right, cool. So I never went, yeah. um, you know, when we were watching it, that movie with Amy Poehler and all that the other night, I was like, oh shit, By that looks way. like a fucking blast. By the way, wine country. The movie? The movie. <laughs> Amy Poehler. Um, it's not like that, by the way. The wine country. Sure. Uh, even if you do it up, it's not like that. Okay. It's way better. Uh, is You're it really? taking like limo, taking bus to all the different wineries, yeah, yeah. getting fucking trashed. And then you go back to like solving Buellton, um, go to like you know, the bars there and then stay in like a cute little hotel. The way that they did it was fucking annoying, depressing. And it was just, it was a really bad movie. Um, it was, it, it, it no, had its moments. It was bad. It, it, had it was its bad moments. for, for women. <laughs> it was bad for women. It just was so depressing. It made people. It was a depressing look at fifty because it was about a it woman was... who was celebrating her fiftieth birthday. It was Rachel Dratch. It was everybody from SNL that was Every... like, "Look, it should have been 
hilarious. Yeah. But the twist that they put on it, I don't know what Amy Poehler was going through or what, but they all were awful. They were all depressed in horrible marriages, yeah. didn't like their job. You know, whatever it may be, they were all unhappy in certain ways. One had cancer, whatever. They got together for some reason and didn't really get along or like each other and and talk to each other in these ways that women and longtime friends don't. Uh, it was just horrible, top to bottom, as far as I'm concerned. From a woman's standpoint, yeah. From a dude's, you're just like, all right, cool. I, I, there was some moments in it that I thought were funny. Paula Powell was really make, fucking funny. She is probably the fun, one of the funniest women. She writes for all those people. Yeah, yeah. And she was one so of the top writers behind, for SNL yeah, for years. Yeah, she is behind years. the scenes the funniest of all of them and kind of like gives them material, whatever. Um, but yeah, I just, it's like sex in the city. Like, girls don't talk to each other like that. We don't fucking fight and like talk shit to each other constantly as right. friends, sisters, maybe. But as friends, we just don't do that. And it's unrealistic and weird. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, look, I don't know. I turned to you halfway through the movie and I was like, is this how women really are out? You know, are they always singing? Are you guys always dancing? Some. I mean, that's the point when me and I can name two other people look at each other and are just like, no. <laughs> uh-uh. We got to go. <laughs> when they turn on Grease too. Yeah. And they all start. Yeah, no, no, no. Doing I, I, a dance party. I, yeah, like in the movie. I, I get it. I, I understand, but he's just like, oh, all right, cool. Because that, like, that, I would never do that with my buddies. No. Yeah. And I, I don't like doing that either. So it's like, but it inevitably always happens. So, yeah. That was a hard blink you just gave. Well, it's hard. It's hard getting to a certain age and um, not feeling that age do you know what I mean yeah not feeling like into the things that people your age are into or the boringness that people are not, you know what I mean sure. so sucks there was a party the other day um have you heard of these silent discos no so it's a thing that girls are doing now when they get together uh they have all have these headphones and they like turn off the lights and it's like neon and stuff and you can you all are hearing the same song but if you take off your headphones it's just silent and it's just people like that sounds like purgatory mm -hmm. and so <laughs> this is an anonymous story it's from anonymous but yeah so she went to this you know with our friends in our same age group moms whatever. She went to the thing. They were drinking, hanging out at this beach house. They rented, blah, blah, blah. Out comes a tray of headphones early, early in the night. Oh, God. Five, six, maybe two glasses of wine in. She's like, what the fuck? She's like, I'm uh, hanging out, talking. So they all, the lights go out, the neon headphones on. Yeah. And they're, and two like Dr. Dre and just these very cringy Wu-Tang probably. And um, <laughs> so she takes off the headphones and is just exactly. Here's that. Oh, that's it. Is it? Forgot about Dre. Right? Oh, no. Yeah? No. No. She left. Didn't tell anybody. Just took him off, <laughs> which is exactly what I would have done. Right. I don't know. No, no, no. The novelty of that would be fun for about five minutes. And then after that, you're like, hey. Five minutes, lights back on, headphones off, let's drink and talk. Like, we don't have a lot of time. Yeah. With adults, <laughs> with uh, out of work. I mean, these are people, th that's a symptom of like having a lot of time on your hands. <laughs> because when you don't, it's precious. Like, even going to a movie sometimes for me has to be a really good movie because I would rather like, talk yeah. have a drink like have some interaction before i go back to you know work or two kids or whatever it may be like your time is when your time is precious you don't do fucking bullshit like that right right yeah life sure is precious isn't it that's bodie from point break when your time <laughs> is precious stop it's Bodie from Point Break, by the way. Um, just, I'm, I'm, again, I want to, I want really want to squeeze these in today. Mm -hmm. um, these point, <laughs> these Point Break, and you got a list of them there, or 
<laughs> no, this is all off the top of my dome, you know? Yeah. So. Cool. cool, 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 cool. Uh, now let's get to the sponsor, Special Agent Utah. There he is. Boom. Another one. BlackRifleCoffee.com. What are you looking at? You've got, you've got pain all over yourself. I'm getting a manicure after I'm done with the studio. Yeah. So I apologize. We're building a new studio space, everything. June is setting it off. Setting it off. Again, subscribe on, on YouTube to the show. Ross Patterson Revolution on YouTube. Do it now. Don't be a, don't be a fucking idiot. You know? I don't need idiots around. Back off, war child. Seriously. Another one. Um, point break. Point break. Oh, BlackRifleCoffee.com is where you can, you can find all your point break needs. You know they needed coffee to serve in the morning, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Dawn Patrol? Yeah. You got to. Got to, brother. You got to, brother. Dawn Patrol. And at Dawn Patrol, you can uh, fill up your cup and grab life by the beans at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Be a great name for a coffee. What? Dawn Patrol. Dawn Patrol be sweet. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Get a little uh this dome, this this mug on one of the bags. Nope. No, nah, I think it'd be great. Uh uh-uh. uh. It'd be really great. I would do a surfboard. I would do like a surfboard. Well, me holding like... a surfboard, obviously. Uh so, yep. I don't know. You're going to need me on that bag uh, at blackravelcoffee.com. I don't know how that would Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off there. Next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You're always trying to put your face on something, man. It needs to be on stuff. You're always trying to put your mug. Why would I hide this mug? This mug deserves to be seen by the world and cherished. Ghostbed. Ghostbed Ghostbed.com will help you. Make a little love, make a little leave. You know who the, the love interest was in Point Break? Yeah. Lori Petty. Tank machine. What is it? What? Tank, tank, tank girl. girl. Tank yeah. girl, yeah. Lori Petty was her name. Lori Petty. Yeah. Take a little gander at her now. Yeah, she still Just looks all right. A... She still looks kind of the same, right? No? Sorry? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She was always an interesting. She was always. That was an odd choice for that movie. She was always an odd choice. They put, they kind of plugged her in as love interest in these weird movies yeah. where you go, oh. Yeah. It was a time, you know, there was a, it was a, Meh. it was what it was. We were going through something yeah. as, a, as a nation. They didn't yeah. have ghost beds, by the way, in Point Break, but I bet if they did, she would have been be tied to the, that. Yeah. You'd be on the floor. Be on the, on the floor. And uh, you don't look. You don't really. It's the mattress. You don't really need a a box spring for either. It's that great. Yeah. Go to ghostbed.com dot com forward slash drinking bros today. Thirty six month, no interest, pay as you go program. No one is doing that, Jabes. No one. Their mattresses are amazing. Pillows, sheets, uh, and if you're a military or first responder, fifteen percent off forever. Uh, but go get their fucking deals. The bundle package right now is seven ninety nine. I think We're amazing. getting a couple at the office. At the um, new studio, yeah. A couple people in the neighborhood are getting them. Yeah. I don't know. if They're blowing up, dude. They're everywhere. Um, we're stoked. And we're, we're, we got a big deal uh, coming down the pipe with them in June. We're super amped about. Uh, next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Lemon, orange, grape. Orange, four amazing flavors, 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Kick the can. You don't need it. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch rip, rips open and squeezes into every liquid available. Rip, rip. Ooh. Rip, rip. Uh, Strike Force Energy, zero carbs, zero sugars, still all that tasty fun. I don't know what that is. I just made that up. Sure. Go to strikeforceenergy.com today. Last longer than five hour energy. Use the promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Subscribe. They have a subscription of the month club as well. Last but not least, Jabes, this is what you came for. This is what the people came for. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah. You rock it? Ooh, you had a little sting on that. You rock it? You rock a dirty fingernail? You like a nail? <laughs> <laughs> I do I'm you not wearing nail. headphones today, so I don't mind that. Fancy you can go as loud as you nail. Want. You like a fancy nail? <laughs> Just one or all of them? Nail. Nail. Either way. 
Like there. Can you do all of them though? I know nail. Go. I know your nail. <laughs> I want more than one, though. Yeah, they're going to pull. They're going to pull the show off here. Uh, Straightrazors.com. Finest shaving products in the biz. If you're a dude in this life or a pregnant lady. Mm -mm. Yep. Still shaving bushes Mm -mm. um, all over the world. Don't do it. That's true. That's true. Straightrazors.com will get you all you need for Father's Day. Get a kit, dude. If you're worried about using a straight razor, use a safety razor. Go to straightrazors.com right now. Revolution. 20% off. Learn it, live it, love it. All day, all day, all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. A lot going on in the world, Jabes. A lot going on. And you, you, you might say to yourself, hey, we talking about abortion today? No, absolutely not. We're talking about Burger King today. What? Yeah. We're talking about the, the Burger King. This is a fucking... I, I don't know if it's genius or you're just asking for, for problems. Okay. Like you're gonna lo- I think you're going to lose all the shit inside of your body on this one. So Burger King is going to deliver Whoppers to L.A. drivers stuck in traffic. So there's going to be an app. Um, And they did this test, and it was really successful in Mexico City. Okay? So they've been doing it in Mexico City. I don't know how we didn't hear about it. We're hearing about it now. Um, But uh, the, the fucking L.A. Times is reporting that you can order on your phone. They want you to talk into the app. So the app's going to take your order. Where you're at in traffic, they're going to have that pinged into your phone. And then they're, they're taking motorcycles down the 405, nope. and then they're going to drop the burger Mm-mm. off at your car Mm-mm. for L.A. traffic. No. no. Is that the weirdest shit of all time? It's just stupid. It's going to fucking... Make more traffic. Can you imagine? Yeah. You're stuck in traffic and the guy in front of you like is paying and thing and like the well, motorcycle, gonna, you can move forward. So here's the, the thing. You're prepaying. So he just throws it in the window. That's it. Throws it in the window. He's gone. How? Are we there yet as a society? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lazy as fuck where you can't fucking pick up Burger King before you get on the 405. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Lazy. Stupid. Yeah, we're there. Oh, man. L.A. sucks, doesn't it? Just fucking sucks. God, can um, you imagine? I mean, how embarrassing, by the way. I get embarrassed when people, when I'm even like eating in the car at all. I would die <laughs> if I was the one that used this service. <laughs> oh. So you have to be in a one point. Nine mile radius of a Burger King, which let's face it, on the four or five or like the ten or the one hundred one, it's a gimmick. It's like the Domino's it's, it's fixing the street. They've never fixed one pothole. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's all a gimmick. It's we like, don't know that there was a pothole on our way out of the neighborhood. All I know is it was fixed one day. Right? Who the fuck? But am when I Domino's fix it, it they Domino's. put the stamp on it. Oh really? Yeah. No way. Yeah, they put like the white. You know, they put a little roller stamp. We, so we have to go to L.A., I think, what, at the end of June? Um, mm-hmm. Man, this would be a really great time to test this out. I mean, yeah. See if I could get a fucking Whopper in yeah, my car. Yeah, we should probably test it. <laughs> and I think that'll be a lot of it, is people doing it, like, filming it and shit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Novelty. God damn it, that's going to be annoying as fuck. So it's annoying. It's going to cause more traffic. I think that's just dumb. Look, I don't I, again, know. a lot of, no one's going to use it. It's all a gimmick. They just want you to talk about it, which we are. I don't, I don't know how or why they chose Mexico City as the test for that. But like, hey, shit, I don't know. Maybe it's more progressive than I know, Jabes. Yeah. And wasn't there like a billion people or something crazy that live there in Mexico City? A billion? It's a lot. No, I don't think it's that much. Isn't it the most populated city in the world? Mexico City? Yeah. I wish... Wish there was a way to find out, There's but again, no we don't have... There's no way. There's no way. Um, Population, Mexico City. Ross looks at the not internet. In the, not in the world. There's no way. It's got to be someplace in China or... 8.855 million people. Okay. Huh. Well, let's go to the top 10 largest cities in the world then. Let's see where we're at. Oh, fuck, man. I mean, I Mex- way off on this. No, I was, I was, I, I am incorrect on this. Okay. There's more people in Los Angeles than there is in Mexico City. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, why, so why Mexico City? What, what's the test there? 
Is there that much traffic there? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's populated in the same way that I, th- it, I think it might be smaller than LA. Is that? Yeah, it is smaller than LA. Yeah. But so here, if it has thing, so as many people as LA and it's smaller. Shanghai is coming more... in at number one, 24.1 million. Yeah. That's three times the size. Yeah. Beijing second, 18.5 million. Karachi. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know where that is. I'm going to be honest. That's the first time I've read no one, city. No one knows. And I don't know where that is. No one knows Karachi. where it is. Yeah, no one 18 does. 18 million. Istanbul, 14.6. Dhaka. I know that's in India. 14.5. Tokyo, 13.6. Mm-hmm. Do you like how I put a little flare on it? A little, yeah. a little yeah. accent flare yeah. on it? Moscow, 13.1. Wow. And then Manila, 12.8. That doesn't surprise me. So Mexico City is not even in the top 10. They can kind of get fucked on all this shit then. I don't know why that, that tests. Whew. Good luck. Good luck. I want to see how this thing works. Hopefully it's up and running when we get there. And then I'm going to order Whoppers. We have to. Yeah. We have to. You know to. this, man. Oof, you that know sounds so fucking good right now. This, man. Um, I want to give everybody an up- update on the Britney Spears sitch, by the way. What's going down? Um, her manager said, I cannot recommend her performing ever again and because i think i think the the vegas thing should end i think it all should end and uh i can't be a part of this anymore so I, that's from the manager and look you and i know hollywood more than anybody else those motherfuckers those grimy motherfuckers those agents and managers will try to squeeze every last cent mm-hmm. out of you i'm i'm truly surprised the manager was just like hey man i'm all done making money we're good we're gonna walk away from this yeah there must be some back end with stuff you know her perfume or clothing or something or something that he's still getting or he yeah, really I mean, look, is saying no more money she she has a clothing line and all that other shit well look if she's not performing and making live albums anymore right mm-hmm. britney spears and the residuals and all that stuff she brings in will still be mega and it's fine um, but just not what you're making right now because doing a residency in Vegas and let's face it, you and I have stayed at that hotel, but that's what I said. Everything in that hotel is built around Britney Spears. That's what I said. She needs to not be performing. She needs to be done with that. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised that the, the man, the, the manager has come out and said this. Yeah. Why? Cause is your parents, so, so... why is it not your parents? Right. Why is it not your sister? Like that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And you have a gajillion dollars and it's just. It makes sense to me now. You know, with all this stuff, it makes sense that, you know, the people that were drugging her up and propping her up were the dad. Yeah. He has complete control. So he has the control to say, hey, no, you're not doing this. I will, you know, I'll commit you. Yeah. Yeah. I have the ability to do it. Go home, be with your kids, live off your millions. That's what the dad should have done. No. Uh, you know, it's not happening. So we'll see what the, the final verdict is. But uh, her walking around barefoot in the streets the other day was just like, ugh. where? I, and it looked like she was going into a CVS or something. Ooh, and you're that's just old like, school. Yeah. That's old school. That's shaving your head time. Yeah. So I, I think it's probably time for her to step away. Mm-hmm. The puppet needs to, to be put back in the, in the closet. Yeah. That's because that's where puppets, puppets go in a trunk in a closet and that's it. And I mean, I, there may be part of it that's like keeping busy. I get that. But. Yeah. Uh, no, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, we had another presidential candidate. Ding, 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 Me. ding, 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 Yeah. Number 23 on the Democratic side. Yep. This is. This is number 23. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with him. And look, it's not like it's slap dick, you know, Johnny in the fucking tree trunk five that's running. Like, this is, this is uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio from New York. Wait, what was the one that it's not? <laughs> Slap Dick Johnny in the Tree Trunk Five, like <laughs> it's not, it's not that My guy. My new jazz band. <laughs> um, so he announced that he's running, right? And you know, I, I don't know if anybody was asking for that whatsoever, or, or if anybody cares. Now you're at 23. Look, when we were at 16, they were going to split the stage. 
for debates because debates are coming up here next month. Poof, are we there? Fuck, we're a month away from this. Mm-hmm. Debates for the Democratic candidates will start next month. They were going to, at 16, divide it up into eight and eight, right? Now, you're looking at 23. What, what are you going to have, three different stages full of eight at this point? Mm-hmm. Eight, eight, and seven? What, what are you going to do with this, or how are you going to weed these people out? Because, um, so, like, look, you're able to look at polls right now and, just, and see who's dropping and all that other stuff. Beto is non-existent at this point. Really? Yeah. What did he? Gone. Um, he just the mom comment. The mom comment. Like, yeah. uh, he's been doing this these vlogs, right? Mm-hmm. Like because he wants to tap into the younger voters. Be of and, the people for yeah. the people with the people. The problem is the things he's doing are super white and rich, and it's like, dude, the, that party with, is trying to get away yeah. from that. So, like yesterday, he live streamed himself getting a haircut. People are like, bro, what? Why? Why? Yeah, why? Uh, he had a rally the other day in Vegas. Um, I think there was 30, 30 people that showed up. 28 people total was the thing. Okay, bye. And it was, it was one of those things where, you know, he had done it on, I, I believe it was UNLV campus, and they were on like spring break or whatever the fuck it was, or, you know, and no one was there. I, it, you know, Biden's leading by a lot, they say. So they're going to have to divide this somehow. I imagine it's going to be like that. And then... All of the rest of these guys are going to get pissed. But here's the weird thing about this like announcement, right? Usually you have some rally and something and you know, it's a big deal and all this other shit. I mean, he's the mayor of New York City, for Christ's sakes. Um, this story, which is nuts, because he, he announced it on Good Morning America on Thursday, right? But there was a high school junior in St. Louis who scooped this, scooped everybody, found out it before, and announced it on social media. Uh, he's got a, <laughs> I'm going to say his name because it's pretty impressive. His name is Gabe Fleischer. Gabe. Gabe, Gabe against the machine. Good old Gabe. <laughs> Front lines. He's, look, he is actually, he's a politics junkie um, at 17 years old. He's got a newsletter called Wake Up to Politics that reaches 50,000 people every day which I think is awesome. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay, Gabe. And so he said he did his homework. Um, he saw a small item that, that crossed, crossed his eye, and it was an announcement from a local wing of the Democratic Party in Sioux City, Iowa, inviting members to see de Blasio Friday, the mayor's first stop of the presidential tour. And it was this small little wow. blurb. No one caught it. This kid caught it, um, put it up on Twitter, and just said the cat is out of the bag. And uh, boom, he th- th- this was the, the kid that was credited with scooping this, this 17-year-old kid. And, and he, God love him, man. I, like, I love hearing shit like this because I think it's awesome and I think it's unbelievably positive. And like, um, he gets on uh, before he goes to school and he does this show and he says, I'm Gabe Fleischer reporting live from WTP World Headquarters in my bedroom. Yeah. I love it. I know. Um, and he was the first one to scoop it. 17-year-old from his bedroom who was just a diehard politics junkie. And, uh, I mean, I, to me, I think that was, that, that was the most amazing part of this story. I don't give a shit about de Blasio running. But uh, um, this, this okay. kid, uh, you know, 2,000 miles away in a, in a tiny city who just does his homework every day on politics was able to scoop this from some weird email in like Sioux City or whatever it was. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Shout out to Gabe, dude. That's rad. Hopefully people will check out his thing. Gabe. I, I, and the weird thing about it, when I read this story, I was like, you know what? A 17-year-old is probably going to give you the most honest version of, of politics. Yeah. For real. Because I mean, when you're older, you're already you setting your beliefs. You have all these other issues you're Already setting your beliefs about. and you're jaded. At 17, you really don't, you know, you're trying to help the world Especially and, for an and you educated think you can change the world at 17. It. Yeah. And you're doing your own homework. Interesting. Yeah. And I, and again, I, I think from a young kid in high school, like it's probably where you're going to get the most honest opinion unbiased at least. Like I said, if they're doing their own homework and not just yeah. listening to whatever. Well, right, 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 right. But yeah, still, yeah. I, I think it, I think it's 17, no matter regardless of what you were listening to, or watching or reading or whatever, 
there's still a sense of hope in this, like, I can do anything in this world then, right? Mm-hmm. Did you feel that at 17? Yeah. Yeah, I did too. And then you get older and you realize, you know, either through your own set of circumstances uh, or beliefs in the jobs that you went after or whatever, of like, oh, fuck, maybe this isn't possible or this is hard or, mm-hmm. you, you know, especially politics. When you get older, you realize it's all a crock of shit. And you really can't change for sure anything. Um, you're just kind of stuck in this quagmire there. But for, yeah, for a 17 year old, it's probably the best source to go to. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can have Gabe on the show one day. That would be awesome. It would be. Um, I'd just be curious Loving about... Loving a call. Yeah. Just be curious about uh, why. Because, look, I don't... At 17, I don't remember anyone, anyone who is in politics. No. Like, no one. But I guess also it's a new world where people are caring more. Yeah. When, you know, at 17, nobody really cared. And it was just like, oh, all right, sweet. what are we doing? Cool. You, you do like a mock ballot in class, you know? Yeah. W- when the thing is, and it's just like, who did you vote for? Ooh, yeah. Don't say. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask. That's not polite. It's That's ne- all gone out oh, the window. Yeah. Gone. You kidding me? Gone. Who'd you vote? You didn't vote for him, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> what a different world. Like, <laughs> um, did you see this fucking artwork yesterday that sold for $91 million? Artwork. Oh, boy. The Monet? Jeff Koons. Oh. So he does those, uh, they look like statues. Okay. Um, This was the Silver Rabbit. Okay. $91.1 million it sold for. Uh, The Rabbit is a stainless steel casting of an inflatable rabbit. And uh, $91.1 million dollars. The highest total for a living artist of all time. Living. Yeah. Well, even a Monet, the highest, it was 110. And that was like the couple days before. 110 yeah. million. That's not far off for a fucking Monet. So he's 64 years old. And um, man. Koontz. He held the record for five years for the balloon dog. That orange balloon dog thing was his. Okay. Look, I know about it because these hoity-toity LA people are like, oh my god, yeah. you're going to the the Coons You know, thing? I hate the same museums. And stuff. Same. So when I saw this, Mola. I was like, man, all right, who's buying this shit? And it was, you know, who it was who? Uh, Steve Munkin's dad. Uh, he's the the Secretary of Treasury. Oh, yeah, that cocksucker. Um, his father bought it, and it's just, people are raging. Yeah, where did he get the money? He's rich. He's fucking rich. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you want to spend $91 million on a balloon dog or whatever it is, like a, a rabbit, by all means. Is he in charge of our finances as Correct. a nation? Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So he's not uh, frivolous, you know? Well, look, this is he his dad. Just, this is his dad. Just so. saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Well, cool, 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 <laughs> and um, I love hearing that. You know, I love when hearing that a you know a rich person can ninety one million dollars for this rabbit. Oh, Coons! That's crazy, right? An orig- an original Coons. 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 There it is. There it is. I think you're worried about saying it, James. This is what happened there. Coons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 91.1. What the fuck? What are we doing? What are we doing when we're buying a silver rabbit for that much? You know? That's just crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. I uh, saw the full trailer, by the way, for Rocket Man. Oh. Um, the Elton John movie. Holy shit. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, guys. I mean, I don't know. I may eat my words, but Two weeks. my problem with the, the Queen one was, you know, the lip syncing and the just the rushed the fake uh, mustache and all that stuff. The yeah, fake everything where I mean, I think this guy shaved a bald spot. I, I think he did. You know what I yeah. mean? Sang. Personally picked by yeah. Elton John. Uh, it could be could be amazing. Yeah, so they're in they're in Cannes right now. They're going to do the premiere, and then it comes out here in a couple. I can weeks. at least get on board. Do you I'm, know what I mean? I am all in for yeah. this. It looks amazing. Yeah, I would like a longer trailer. 
Uh, there is one. Uh, okay. I think it's tough because it's R. To show all this stuff, yeah. Yeah, what's really going on. And that, you know, uh, I like the fact that it's R. Yes. Because that's what I wanted the queen mm-hmm. thing to be. And, you know, but Elton John had control of all of this from top to bottom where, no pun intended, but. Yeah. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Boom. This Swayze hair has made me funnier, I feel like. Yeah. Um, he's, no, he's been in control for, for all of it. Scripts. Uh, casting everything mm-hmm. like he cast an unknown. Yeah. I've never heard of this guy. Have you? Um, no, he's been. I mean, he's been in a couple little things, but I didn't know he was like a good actor. He was in like Kingsman kind of thing, wasn't he? You know, I didn't. I didn't watch Kingsman. I don't. No, me neither. But I saw him and thought like he was pretty cute. But I did. I thought he was kind of like a <sighs> Hunger Games type of guy. Whatever. Yeah. I didn't know he was actually talented. So. Uh, he could have just fell into obscurity to me. Man, I, look, I'm amped about this. Like, when you go all out like that, and especially for Elton John, we got to see him on accident um, for yeah, yeah, our yeah. anniversary. We were, we'd, we'd gone out to Vegas to, to see the Stones, mm-hmm. see the Rolling Stones, and Mick got sick and canceled. Um, this is going to be a perfect segue, actually, into our last story. But uh, anyways, he got sick and canceled, and... We were bummed and we didn't know. It was we like, don't know until, so we flew out. It was out. like four we hours like, before the show and it got yeah. canceled and we were just like, what the fuck? I think we were dressed and went over there to get the tickets, right? Yeah, we were so outside, we were the, like we were outside ready the, the arena. Yeah. to go. <laughs> we had had dinner. You know who we told were like us? Gonna, the, you know, the waitress. Waitress. And we were like, shut up. Hit her. Yeah. Punched her in you the face. You punched her right in the face. Punched her in the face. She went down. We stepped over her. Yep. Went to the. Allen Iverson style. Yep. And then. Uh, no, she told us. And, and she was like. Because we were. I think it was wearing a Rolling Stones t-shirt or something. We were like, shut up. Like I was that guy. That's a big of a fan I am. I was that guy who wears the bands. Mm-hmm. To the, the, the band shirt. To the, the actual concert itself. And. She was like, hey, are you not, you're not here by any chance to see the Rolling Stones. I was like, yes. We're like, yeah, totally. It's our <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the look on her face was like, oh, oh, oh my God, it's been canceled. She oh was like, God. no worries. They rescheduled for like three weeks from now. And I was just like, huh? Yeah, because we're obviously from here, you fucking idiot. Nobody's Boom, from punched. Vegas. And is, yeah, then you punched, punched her again. Yeah. And so... I'm on my phone and it's like five o'clock. It was th- like the show was supposed to start at eight. We were having dinner before we went. Yeah. I was five or six o'clock and I get on my phone and I'm like, all right, I'm not going to let this anniversary go down, go down in flames, but I'm going to do something. So I, I was breezing through my phone and Elton John had a, he was ending his residency there or whatever it was. And I was like, man, I love Elton John. I, I would never have thought to go see yeah. Elton John in person. Um, I, I think mostly for the fact that uh, he, before that, before the uh, the residency in Vegas, he wasn't touring really. He wasn't doing mm-hmm. like, you know, stadiums or anything like that. So I was just like, oh, all right, cool. The last thing I can remember him doing was playing with um, Billy Joel. And they were doing like a dueling pianos type of deal. He just does like one offs. He, ne- he hadn't done a, done a tour in a while, but we had to wait on line. Yeah. On this like standby line forever. In Vegas. We finally yeah. get in. I think we're like one of the last people. We get the last he two seats. He has a nosebleed, yeah. you guys, the whole time. Well, when he first started, like like the first two or three songs, he's got a yeah. nosebleed and he goes, he's really funny about it, Elton John. Right. When you go and see, I just thought I'm seeing him before he dies. I mean. That's, but that's how I, that, that's what I love about seeing bleeding. the residencies in Vegas is it is smaller. The artist, since you're not, you don't have to project to a whole stadium. I, I, I think it gives them more freedom to tell you what's really going on and happening. So he comes out and starts singing. And he goes, forgive me, I have a nosebleed. And he goes, uh, I, uh, the, the press is going to say that I'm on cocaine again. But oh, yeah, just yeah, know yeah. that I have a nosebleed. He was really funny about it. And you're like, all right, cool. So after the first couple of songs, he was fine. And then crushed the rest of the night. Right. And I was like, dude, I, it was incredible. Oh. And I was grateful to have seen Elton John. I was like, holy shit. I mean, it was just hit after hit oh, after hit. Dude. Oh, I mean, and it's just like. Yeah. Even if you're a little bit Elton John, you go, oh, my God. I know. You don't even have to be that gigantic of a fan. And it's just a great show, and he's amazing. F- fantastic. And then when Tiny Dancer came on, I get a little choked up. 
have to. Man, I was choked up when Tiny Dancer came on. Yeah. That was amazing. Oh. I was also choked up when Mick posted that video yesterday. Mick Jagger, you know, he's my end all be all. We know. Obviously, we name our kid Jagger, but uh, yeah, that, that probably should include everybody in. Sure. When this, when, when he had this heart problem and he went down, I, there was part of me that was like, I don't know if he's going to return. No, I mean, he's, he's an older guy. It's going to take, it's something like, yeah, it'll be like that. So he had a stent put in, in right. his heart and it was for some artery or whatever it mm. was. He was out for about a month and then he posted this video yesterday of him by himself rehearsing, dancing like aggressively where you're just like, oh my God. And I was like, whoa, 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 this does not feel, this feels a little too soon. And right. I didn't know, but there was no context to it. Um, he just posted the video, no words, no nothing. And I was just like, and everybody was like, yeah, Nick's back. Holy shit. And all, every comment on social media was just like, dude, if I, I, if I can be like this at 75, 76 years old, this Seriously. would be the greatest thing on the face of the planet. But let's face it. No one is like this. No one is Mick Jagger. This is why he's the best. Boom, wake up this morning, tour, new tour dates, up, boom, he's back in biz. Got to go, obviously, because um, I don't, there's no way that he's, they're surviving another this one of these. This has got to be the last one. <laughs> and I think maybe people probably feel the same way, so I especially get after your the heart tickets scare, right? now yeah. if you want to go. Yeah, especially after the heart scare. Yeah, because you go, come on. Oh, man, even talking about it, I get... I think it's uh, kind of queasy about it. I don't, I don't want to think it. Like, he can't go. The, the, the stones can't go. Like, just, you can take everybody else, but let's not, let's just leave the stones alone, you know? Ringo. No. Ringo will the good, still well, the, the, be around. The good thing about the stones is this. They don't have a Ringo in the band where, like, the, the, like the drummer of the Rolling Stones is probably the least known, Charlie, Charlie Watts. No, I'm saying Ringo is going to still be around. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. But and he'll he'll he, he'll be he'll tell you about the Beatles for the rest of his mm-hmm. uh, of his life for 30 years. Mm-hmm. The good thing about the Stones is they don't have that guy. So Charlie Watts has said it numerous times, the drummer of the Rolling Stones of like, I'm only doing this because they, these guys want to do it. And that's yeah, 50 yeah. years at this point. And he goes, I'm not going to leave the band. This was my life and all this stuff. I'm not going to leave the band. But when it's over. Like I, I will be in a garden every day and you'll never hear from me again. And yeah. that's kind of how, um, Zeppelin was too, where it was just like, all right, great. Like I, Robert Plant still performs and does his own shit solo wise, but it's not, you know, they did one Zeppelin show, but that was it in like what, 30 years. You never hear from Jimmy Page or, mm-hmm. or any of those guys. And same with the stones. Like I, you know, with Keith, like I think whoever goes in that band, um, you know, you got Ronnie Wood too, but uh, Ronnie's not that type of dude either. He's going to be like, oh, I'm the last one. Like, oh, he's not no. the guy. Whereas Ringo is that guy, where mm. he's just, he'll tell you about it the rest of his life. But I think with the Stones, man, once him or yeah, they'll be Keith done. or Mick or, yeah, they'll be done. Um, and they, they should be. All... Like, the dead isn't. They keep fucking right. touring without people see Jerry people Garcia. Go to see him. I know. But I mean, Ronnie Wood in, in that last documentary, he's such a weirdo, such a cool weird guy they're all rad um they all look great yeah super skinny that must be some kind of <laughs> you know drugs uh, are awesome is what answer it is. to life drugs right? are awesome stay wiry yeah and you'll stay alive <laughs> it's when you get the when you get all the fat around the heart you know you know it's weird though like every study i've seen and we watched that 60 minutes thing about getting older all most of the scientists said the same thing if you're gaining about 10 pounds per decade per 10 you know decade of your life 10 years of your life it actually makes you healthier um i don't know why but these guys are the thinnest people on the planet they still there smoke studies that marble reds every day it's, mick doesn't longer, yeah. mick doesn't but uh keith and ronnie do mick since the 90s has been on a clean eating uh, athlete like diet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I look. I saw one behind the scenes of him where he runs twelve miles every single morning. So when he starts his day, mm-hmm. twelve miles on the treadmill every single day. But like at a high pace, where you're just like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. I mean it. It's. A, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do what he's doing right now, 
on a treadmill, to be honest with you. After watching that, I was just like, what? 12 miles? No, you couldn't. No. No. He's 75 years old and he can't. It's crazy. But I'm saying, you know, there is studies too. The skinny, skinny. Yeah, maybe. It's just, you're just, you know. Maybe. There's not as much weight on your joints that are going anyways. And like, I, I don't know. Uh, look, that'll lead us to the revolutionary figure of the day. And this this will disprove your theory. That's true. Huh? And you know it's going out to Swayze, to Patrick. Oh, he was thin, Wayne. As, thin as shit. Swayze, yeah. yeah. Thin as shit. He was thin as fuck. But he was no, no, not clean living. No. No kind of clean living. Drank there. and smoked two packs a day. But how is that different than Keith or, or, or Ronnie Wood? Since the 90s, they've been all clean. No. And, no. I mean, besides Keith. Keith, Keith and, is, and Ronnie. Don't, don't. Don't. Keith and Ronnie, both of them. Ronnie was smoking reds in that fucking dock. Shit, that's right. Both of them. And the reason why they got along so well, because Ronnie Wood replaced somebody else, was... You know, and I read, obviously I've read all their biographies and all that shit. Like I know everything about the Stones, but Ronnie replaced somebody else in the seventies. The reason why he got in uh, so well with them was the fact that he could party and hang. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, you know, Brian Jones who fucking got all weird, weirded out on drugs and then, you know, died in a fucking pool. Right. Ronnie could hang and party and it was just like him and Keith became besties because that, those are the only two that could hang together. And they're both, they're all still alive. <laughs> it's okay. crazy. Then like, I'll, just, dude, I'll George, get to it. Like, I'll for, get to it then. For the Beatles, Lennon's dead. Obviously he got murdered, so it's not his fault. But mm -hmm. uh, George Harrison died. Harrison used to rage with those guys back in the day. Right. He was best friends with Clapton and Keith and all of those guys. So, you know, I don't know. Patrick Wayne Swayze, though, thin is fuck dainty 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 man tiny tiny man and uh he fucking kicked out yeah um but we're gonna go through look three golden globe nominations dirty dancing should have won blammo ghost should have won blammo to wong fu thanks for everything julie newmar didn't i wouldn't I can't. I don't know. For that time. No, tried it. Tried about 10 minutes of it. It was really, uh, it was ahead of its time for sure. Um, obviously, it was in The Outsiders. Roadhouse is, Roadhouse for me is, yeah. stop what you're doing. I don't care who's here. I don't care if Meghan Markle's bringing her newborn baby in. I'm going to watch Roadhouse and then meet the baby afterwards. I'm going to meet Archie afterwards. Right. Like that's still, I'm that's good. still one that. That stops it for me, you know? I'll stay watching the movie. Stops my day. No, I'll, I'll stay watching the movie as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll and then the I'll movie. just go, I'll go work out or something. Yeah, yeah. go <laughs> see the baby. And then I'll hang out with the baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously Point Break, which is what we're, what we're doing all summer here. Summer is Swayze. But I, I want to I wanna throw, um, throw in this song. She's Like the Wind. Remember that song? No. She's like the wind. Oh, I guess, but only She's from you singing like it like that wind. to me. Mm -hmm. That was Patrick Swayze as well. Really? Yeah. Sang it? Uh huh. It's his song. Yeah. Okay. Wrote, wrote it, recorded it, wrote the whole it, thing. Recorded. Okay. Um, and he was also posthumously awarded the Rolex Dance Award in 2009, which it's a lot of people are fighting for that. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. It's probably in this life, Pulitzer Prize. One. Pull it, pull it, pull it, surprise, pull it, surprise, pull it, sir. Yeah, the Pulitzer, pull it, surprise. Oh, I thought you were saying pull it, surprise. Oh, this isn't a whole Kogan thing. <laughs> pull it, surprise. Whole Kogan. I probably thought at one point it was pull it, surprise. No, I'm, surprise. I, bet, I bet you did. Yeah, surprise. surprise you, you won the pull it. You pull it. You pulled it. <laughs> um, so I put pull it, surprise at one Rolex dance award at two in my book. Sure. And then, you know, you can go down the list after that. I don't, yeah. whatever's your thing, but uh, those are probably one twosies in the world. So it was nice that he got recognized for that. Um, born in <laughs> Houston, Texas in 1952, Javes. You know who he shares a birthday with? Mm. Our son, Jagger. No. August 18th. Sweet. Yeah. So. Scary. Uh okay yeah super we'll keep super an eye on we'll keep an eye on his uh, addictive personality I guess <laughs> uh, the reason by the way the reason why he was so amazing at dance because everybody asked that his mom was a choreographer so right um, Swayze again, was the best dainty God. dainty man could fly through the air we lost a we lost a good man 
That is true. That's the real good man. Can we put She's Like the Wind on the audio version of this at the end? Sure. That would be amazing. I appreciate it, Jabes. Sure. All right. Uh, uh, totally. <laughs> what are you blanking about over there, Jabes? I'm just going to, you know. Are you looking for She's Like the Wind right now? No, 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 no. Do you not believe me that this is a song? No, I believe you. I believe you. Okay. Because there was some doubt and hesitation in your mind of like, man, I think Ross might have it wrong here. I never think that. <laughs> you were Googling away there trying I'm to do your best. The one. I'm always the one that's wrong. No, that's not true. Mm. I've been wrong about shit. You were wrong in this show. Was I? Mexico City. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some we kind of fact weird fucking here. fact you pulled out of your ass. It just, when you see the images of Mexico City, you're just sure. like, this seems like a truck ton of people. What yeah. Are we, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Uh, but let's, let's have a little tribute to Swayze. We will. Um, on the way out of here. And uh, again, back off War Child. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, James. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Here is Patrick Wayne Swayze. Singing She's Like the Wind. Good night.